Milling Through History presents Wanamaker's Department Store. When it comes to the Christmas season, certainly we are all familiar with the headache of having to go out and shop for our loved ones. We think about what it is that they want. What could they possibly need? Why does this cost so much? All of these things have certainly come to the forefront. And while many people have to figure out exactly how it is that they will shop, one of the things that has perhaps disappeared more often than not has been that of the department store. Many of us can remember growing up having to go into malls and stores, but with the rise of online shopping, those days seem to have almost completely disappeared. And yet the effects of the department store and shopping in general has certainly transitioned itself over even into online retail market. So how is it this occurred? Well, it really all begins with one man, and that man was John Wanamaker, who was born in Philadelphia in 1838. Unable to join the Union Army during the Civil War, he chose to open a men's clothing store with his brother-in-law. Now, following the death of said brother-in-law, Wanamaker purchased the abandoned Pennsylvania Railroad Station and converted it into a large retail location, which he called the Grand Depot. And he got the inspiration for this particular idea by London's Royal Exchange and Paris's Le Hall. Now, the store would open in time for the American Centennial Exposition in 1876. And the following year was refurbished and expanded to include both men's and women's clothing, along with dry goods. Now, one of the things which made Wanamaker's store so unique is that he decided to do some enlightened thinking when it came to retail shopping. He paid attention to the way in which people had shopped and looked at advertisements. And so one of the first things he had done was he got rid of trying to do advertisements on Sundays. People, especially in the 19th century, were more inclined to be following a much more religious path. And so without anyone actually coming out to do shopping on Sundays, why advertise in a day when there was no customers available? In addition to this, his advertisements were delivering on promises which seemed to be actually quite revolutionary for its time. One of the things he was going to do was that he would produce quality merchandise that would be sold. If a customer was not happy, they could make returns and even get their money back. He would place a restaurant inside of the store so shoppers who were there for an extended period of time and got hungry could actually eat and then continue shopping. But perhaps the most revolutionary aspect of the entire store was that all items would have a price tag attached to it. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but prior to the introduction of the price tag, any time somebody were to purchase a good, it would be the shopkeeper who would dictate what the price was. And depending on how much they had or how little they had, that price could fluctuate. By putting the price tag on the object, a set price was determined and could no longer be adjusted when it came time for checking out. In addition to having all these promises for the customer, employees found that they were treated with a great deal of respect, which would include not being yelled at in front of the customers, being provided health care, pensions, and even profit sharing. Now, Wanamaker's store would also be revolutionary as it would be the first location which would in we have electricity, telephones, and tube stations placed inside of it in order to make it as modern of a building as was possible. Now, John Wanamaker would watch his store grow until his passing in 1922. His son would take over the business and help to enhance the reputation of the Wanamaker store by making it much more of an artistic center and act as a temple for beauty. Now, for a time, Wanamaker's really was a thriving store, but as is oftentimes the case, competition begins to copy what the originator makes. And as a result, customers were being pulled away from Wanamaker's and going into competitor locations. In 1978, the Wanamaker family sold the company to Carter Hallway Hale Stores, which then would sell the company to Woodward and Lothar. The financial woes of the new owners began to see the legacy of the founding store be carved up as many aspects of it began to be broken and sold into other locations. 
In 1995, Wanamaker Incorporated was dissolved and brought an end to the legacy of the originator of retail shopping. And while Wanamaker's is no longer an existing store, its building, which was the originator of all, is there still in Philadelphia today. It is presently at Macy's department store and controls a massive city block of Philadelphia. And individuals can still go and see the building today and understand just how large a retail shopping center this location truly was. And so, thanks to John Wanamaker and his ability to reform and effectively change shopping, everything we take for granted today is all because one man had a vision to make it so. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.